Peace to everyone. I um, hope you are contending for the faith in the true Christ, which is Christ in you. And it is not the outward, but it is the inward, because as Moses broke those stone tablets, which was the outward, the Lord's body was broken for us, whose uh, initials equal 10 in these different names in the Greek, Hebrew, and English, as we learn. So, um, this video is interesting. It's, if you didn't know, um, the Gospel of Mark, um, the ending varies because there's a long version and there's a short version. I only knew this because I started studying Codex Sinaiticus. And so this video is about uh, the Gospel of Mark, the long version, the short version, and it's about some of the discrepancies within that. It's about textual variants. And it's about a secret uh, manuscript that I found recently, uh, thanks to the Centre of New Testament uh, Manuscript Research, which is on Facebook. Uh, they brought it to my attention. It is um, a Greek manuscript called um, GA032. GA032. And it's, uh, it's very interesting. I'm going to talk about that in the second part of the video. So, in this first part of the video, uh, I'm going to um, show you about uh, the differences in the Gospel of Mark. So the, the Gospel of Mark that we're used to in our Bibles is the long version. But um, there was a short version and it finished at verse 8. So if you read verse 8, it says, And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Okay, so that's where the short version ends. But the long version we're used to in our in our standard Bibles says, Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared to first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he cast seven devils. So this is what I'm going to concentrate on here, because if we look at the Greek rending of the text, uh, there is a massive mistranslation of these verses on the resurrection, because they want to apostatize uh, people into Baal worship and Sunday which was ordained by Constantine the Great in 321 AD and all the translations and all the churches will have Sunday as a Christian Sabbath because they'll say it's the resurrection day it was the first day of the week and so I did a lot of studies uh, there's, there's videos albeit quite um, basic ones on on the channel where I've I've shown the reason why it's a mistranslation, because the Greek says, in commonly it says miaton sabaton in the three Gospels of Matthew, Luke, and uh, John, it says miaton sabaton, which means one of the Sabbaths. Okay, now if we go into long version of Mark, uh, it varies in that it says uh, prote sabato, okay, prote sabato, which is first Sabbath. And so, if we think about the Myrton Sabaton, it's commonly said by everybody in a kind of parrot fashion that you have to say this is the first day of the week because the Greek, they could use Mia as first, they say, and not one. Okay, so protein Greek is one. Uh, uh, sorry, protein Greek is first. Protein Greek is first. So, why is it in the Gospel of Mark it says the first Sabbath? Okay, because there's an inconsistency which was picked up by, um, I think it was Origen, or is it Eusebius? Eusebius. There's a lost work of Eusebius, and in it he, he, he mentions there's a difference between the Gospel of Mark saying very early in the morning, but in the Gospel of Matthew it says late in the Sabbath, or at the end of the Sabbath, so we can see that what happens is, because we've got multiple witness accounts of, of this, they have to agree with one another. And we can see that because of the deliberate mistranslation of Myrton Sabaton or, or Prote Sabato, which is the first Sabbath or one of the Sabbaths, we can see that it doesn't add up because Sunday is incorrect. And the reason is, is because uh, as I studied this, it became clear that the first Sabbath meant 
the first Sabbath following the Passover, right? Because when Christ was crucified, the crucifixion occurred on the Wednesday, right? Sorry, he was arrested on the Wednesday. He was arrested on the Wednesday. Christ was arrested on the Wednesday, which was which was the Passover, which was the fourteenth of Nice and where they killed the lamb. So if you, I've been through this in, in uh, is it Mark, fourteen? Yeah, Mark fourteen. I I, I recovered that quite cate categorically and clearly that the, the Passover is ordained to be observed on the fourteenth of Nisan, when they, when they kill the the lamb. Okay, so he was arrested on this day. He was crucified on the Friday. Now, people then don't understand as to the reasons. How can this be when he's um, been been killed three days and three nights? Because that, that confuses pretty much everyone. Um, and I, I studied an, an early first century secret text and it told me that when he was on the cross and it goes dark, that's counted as a day and a night. And then it goes light again, so that's a day. Then you have the actual night of the Friday. So then we've got two days and two nights. And then we go into Saturday, we have the day again, and then we have the night. So he's done three days and three nights and he, 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 he raised, he's raised from the dead on, on the Saturday night so that's why it says late in the Sabbath and then if we read at the end of Mark at the end of Mark says as it began to dawn towards the, the, the first Sabbath or very, very early in the morning of the first Sabbath they came to the sepulchre so we can see that these are, these are the, uh, the problems that we have with mistranslation and apostasy and it brings me on to the next point which is textual variance now there's thousands of Greek manuscripts that are available and have slightly different rend rendings of things I mean if we go back to uh, I remember telling a, a story on the channel about Origen when he purchased a Hebrew Bible or he purchased some Hebrew scriptures and it said uh, there was a gospel uh, the, the origin bought and it's uh, I think he went to Judea actually but he, he said um, Bar Barabbas who was the the murderer who was uh, set free in a prisoner release in this particular gospel he was mentioned as being called Jesus Barabbas and so he couldn't accept this and uh, he, he just called him Barabbas but um, what I found interesting about this uh, is I did some studies on, on dualism and if we look into dualism within uh, Christian types particularly like with the scapegoats and the dead bird and the living bird uh, we can see that these types are fulfilled within those you know observances of the law that's why it says Christ is the end of the law I mean he fulfilled all those types so Jesus Barabbas I mean, Barabbas means son of the father. And um, so we become a type of Barabbas who is like a goat that is set free. One dies and one lives. One is killed and one is set free. Like the dead bird and the living bird. Um, and so this is the type of textual variance that I'm talking about. Because in the, in the first century, there wasn't like a compilation of scriptures that were we have today. There was basic um, parchments that were copied. You know, where the, we did, they did, obviously the printing press came along with with uh, with Caxton around the time of Martin Luther, and we had the, all these printed Bibles. But in the first century, everybody was going by uh, handwritten handwritten separate texts, uh, and that, and that's how it was obviously in, in, in antiquity. Uh, you know, they were using scrolls. And so um, all of these scrolls, or, or a lot of these scrolls uh, that were passed around and survived, um, they, some of them were uh, kept in Constantinople. And when the uh, Ottoman Turks invaded Constantinople around 1423, uh, a lot of the um, Greek scholars 
of the Greek Orthodox Church scholars fled from Constantinople and came west into Europe. And this was basically what was going to be the beginning of the Protestant Reformation because, you know, Rome had uh, apostatized and had its Latin Vulgate Bible. And you had people like Erasmus who did a, uh, a Bible which had the Latin and the Greek um, in, in one book so that you could, you could compare. And that's what Martin Luther did. He compared uh, the verse um, where in Matthew uh, 3 or 4, is it, where it's the first thing Christ says on his ministry, which says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So in the Latin Vulgate, instead of repent, it said do penance. And so we, we can see that there's these two different rendings of a text depending on, on uh, which translation it was. But it was, in, it was interesting to me uh, that the um, you know the, the the scribes from the Greek thought, Greek Orthodox churches in in uh, Constantinople, you know, brought their Greek manuscripts into the West, and you know there's there's, there's a lot of Greek manuscripts that we can uh, look into and uh, compare to our modern translations, which is is kind of like what I've been doing a lot of, of lately. We can get a more accurate and precise translation of the of the things, such as I, I mentioned, Kings of the East. In Revelation, you know, we have kings of the east, but actually, if you look at the Greek, it says kings of the rising sun, which gives us a different context, which ties me back into the resurrection, because as we look at chapter 16 of, of Mark, verse 2 says, And very early in the morning, the first Sabbath, they came to the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And so, you know, if we understand that Revelation 16 is talking about the kings of the rising sun it's talking about the those um, Christians the Christians of the resurrection how their kingdom is going to come to pass and so you know for me the precision of the translation is the most important thing that's why we need to go back to these earliest Greek texts and get the best translation we can I mean apart from you know I would recommend um, a free PDF on Bible Hub they do their Berean Bibles. There's a there's a one called the Berean Literal Bible, um, and they do a decent translation of the New Testament, except for the resurrection accounts where they they stick to first day of the week, which is not right. So, because of this, I'm doing my own translation of Codex Sinaiticus, where I'm going to be putting in first Sabbath because it's really important. You know, if you don't understand the seven Sabbaths between Passover and Pentecost you had to count so the day that christ was raised was the first sabbath following the passover think about it 14th of nisan or abib 14th of nisan when the israelites left egypt uh that was the passover and so if that occurred on a wednesday the first sabbath was going to be the following saturday okay and so that was going to be the first number one the first sabbath so that's what all the all the greek um accounts say Meton Sabaton or Proto Sabaton. It means the first Sabbath. So you've got to count seven of those, which will take you to the Pentecost, which is the day when the uh, the barley, you know, the first fruits of of Israel, um, the feast of the Pentecost, which was again when the Holy Spirit was received by the apostles in Jerusalem in Acts three. And if we think about that, right, we get fifty days. Seven Sabbaths or 50 days. 50 in the Gematria means the coming of the Holy Spirit. Okay? The number 50 in Gematria means the coming of the Holy Spirit. So, so if we apply, like I was, I've been teaching in this video, types, Gematria, we go back to the original Greek, we can get a very good and clear understanding of what the early church would have taught, which is what this channel is all about. I'm a born again Christian, I'm not a, I don't have any denomination, and. Um, I'm just very spiritual. I have a very keen um, uh, I understanding, which has been just from uh, trying to prove all things, as Paul says. So, as I said the other day, the last part of the, the video I'm going to talk about now is um, manuscript, Greek manuscript, which is kept in the Smithsonian, which is also apparently where they keep all the bones of the dead giants. Um, and things like that. It's probably a bit like the uh, end scene of the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, but Smithsonian have this thing called the Freologion. 
Triologion. And this uh, particular text is also called uh, GA032. Okay, GA032 sounds very boring, but it's actually quite spectacular because I'm going to read uh, again at the end of the Gospel of Mark Long version. If we go to uh, it's, it's verse 14, right? So he's been raised from the dead. Uh, it says afterwards, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with uh, their unbelief and, and hardness of heart because they didn't believe them which had seen him after he was risen. So between verse 14 and 15 we have uh, a missing secret text called uh, GA032 which is uh, on the, uh, called the Freologion Manuscript which is kept at the Smithsonian Smithsonian Institute and I'm going to read it because uh, this is the kind of thing that I just I, can't, I just love it um, and um, you know if, if you want to uh, look at it for yourself I'll probably put a, a link if I can remember I'll put a link on the comments I'm generally appalling at putting links on comments I kind of forget so um, Jerome backs this up because he says uh, in some exemplars and especially in Greek manuscripts of Mark in the end of his gospel it is written afterwards when the eleven had sat at the table Jesus appeared to them and rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who saw him risen so this is Jerome talking now in one of his commentaries and they justified themselves saying that this age of iniquity and unbelief is under Satan who does not allow the truth and power of God to be grasped by unclean spirits therefore reveal your righteousness righteousness is now so Jerome says this so if you were reading that in his work which is called against Pelagius this is in uh, I don't know if it's book 2 or it's chapter 2 verse 15 but that's what it is Jerome against Pelagius 215 if you want to check that out he says that there's some text missing from our gospel of Mark so I'm going to read the full version which is in this uh, this manuscript this is called the free Elogion. Okay, so if I was to read, uh, reread that in 14, as it says, he upbraided them with, uh, for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they didn't believe the, the witnesses which had seen him after he was risen. Okay, and so the disciples then say in the missing text, and they excused themselves, saying, This age of lawlessness and unbelief is under Satan, who does not allow the truth and power of God to prevail over the unclean things of the spirits. Therefore reveal your righteousness now. Thus they spoke to Christ. And Christ replied to them, The term of years of Satan's power has been fulfilled, but other terrible things draw near. And for those who have sinned, I was handed over to death, that they may return to the truth and sin no more, in order that they may inherit the spiritual and incorruptible glory of righteousness that is in heaven. Wow. I mean, I prefer that. Uh, you know we should have that in the in the scriptures and that's why i'm going to include it in in my translation i don't know how long it's going to take me to finish it quite a while probably but um these are called text textual variants so you know one greek manuscript might have something extra it might have a different one word you know one oh, a name of one town might say you know bethany might be called something else or as we said in that in that uh, early gospel that was in Judea, it, was, it, said, it said Jesus Barabbas. So we've got to look at all these. I mean, I'm interested in these things. But um, that's it for this video. This is uh, the difference between the, the long and short versions in the Gospel of Mark. Looking also at the mistranslation of uh, Mirton Sabaton and Proto Sabaton. So I approve all things.